One of the tools I use a lot within Microsoft Forms is the ranking type of question. Um, at first, I didn't use it very much, but once I started um, trying it out in different areas, I found a lot of reasons for using it. So let me just show you a few examples of how I use the ranking tool. And first off, what is the ranking tool? So let's take a look at a form or a quiz. It doesn't really matter. Again, we're going to create a form. And in here, when you click on add new, you have these four choices. But then if you click on the down arrow, you get the ranking. So click on ranking. You can put in a question. Again, you can also put in a picture if you would like. Um, where I use pictures um, often is things like screenshots of things so I can have it. And just a little note about screenshots. Um, if you're trying to put in an image in here, uh, if it is a lot more horizontal than it is vertical, it will fit under the question so you can still have the text and then you can have the image below. And so um, that's just a little tip. Otherwise, what will happen is it will put the image on the right hand side. And um, it if it's something that's even slightly horizontal, it will be too small. So I recommend really long horizontal screenshots if you ever do that. But you can put in your question and then in here you can put in your options. So you can put in different types of options. You can add options. And once you have those options, just a preview, they would look like this. And what happens with people on a computer is they can either click and drag or they can use the up and down arrows. What's really handy is on the phone, if students use a phone or a tablet, they just hold down and drag and round things. And I found my students really found that quite easy for them. And so a lot of the students, when they're working in groups, when we're in face-to-face -face classes, they'll often sit down and one student will just pull up a phone and they'll do it on the phone. And so because of that, I actually use the QR code to share quite a bit. So I'll use, um, under the share, I'll often pull up the QR code just so that, which is the second button here so I can share that with him. All right, so back to the ranking. So with ranking, what happens with that? Let me just show you an example of one where what they did is the students did a reading and then what they were supposed to do is then try and figure out what order things happened in the story because the story isn't told chronologically. It's told with a kind of a recalling back to some things and so they have to kind of figure out from the language because this is a, an English language class. They're trying to figure out what goes first, what goes second, what goes third. So they have to go through here and then they have to move the items into the right order. So what I did is I had my students off in groups. This one was a face-to-face -face class, but it could be done in breakout groups. And I made this as it was anonymous, meaning that I shared it where they didn't have to log in with their school account to do it. The reason why is because it was a group thing and what I do is I ask my students, I designate one student to be the person who answers the questions and then the others just discuss it and that person moves into the proper order. So that way it doesn't get tagged with their name, it's just anonymous. And so what happens is after everybody has voted, I come back to the class and I pull up the responses. And you can see here at the bottom what happens with this is um, it will number, it will give a rating to each thing based on the number of the scoring that happens with each of these. So just to kind of figure this out, this one has seven items. So that means if you put an item in first place um, in this, which is the top, uh, it'll get seven points. Second place, seven place gets six points. Fifth place gets th uh, five points and so forth. It keeps on going down until you get to seven, down to one point. Then what it does, it totals all of those up, as you can see here, and it ranks them. It shows what is the ranking of the average of everybody in the class. So everybody that submitted, it takes all of those numbers, and you can see them here. Most of the people put this first, 71.4%, uh, and 28.6% put this as a second choice. So um, we know that they must have been thrown off by this one because those are the ones where we can see that that same 28.6 put this number four item in first place down here. But we can see on average, and then what I do is I talk them through it and we take a look at what the average is versus what the reality is from the story in this case. So then that we can see, are they understanding? And if there seems to be a lot of problems with one particular area, we go back to the text to try and figure out why is that one ranked here in this chronologically than this one? So this is a great way of doing it. And you can use them individually here. You can see how each individual group did it. But 
in essence, the idea for this one here for me is to do it as a group and then a class review so we can see what each one is. What's also nice is it does give me the time of how long it takes to complete. And I can remember that for next time. So when I submit this to go for another class later on, I now have a timing idea of how long it takes. What were, what were the longest ones and what were the shortest ones, that type of thing. Okay, so that's one option. Another option is, and this one here is in my writing class, we were looking at different introductions and they were trying to put the introductions into an order, a logical order based on both the language of that's in there and the content so this idea of working from more general to more specific in an introductory paragraph so they tried to put these in and then we could take a look at the responses together and talk about whether or not again the average so it was just another idea of what we did each one here is a sentence actually i think some of these have uh, more than one sentence because i tried to combine a couple things but um in general I just tried to get them and then we talked about how there might be some variances on that there might be some things that might be slightly switched around um, but what did the author choose in the end and why so this is another great way of doing it same thing anonymous send off in groups have them work another thing I do have them uh, have my students do is we get a choice they get to choose what topic we want to focus on now what would be more important for them in that moment so what you can do is for the example we did ours in modules which meant it was in a series of three weeks and these modules they could choose under that topic the general topic there were different tasks they could work on and you put them i put them into groups and they could decide um, actually individually what they would like to see um, go first what would they like to see happen first what's more, more important to them so if we run out of time the least important one doesn't happen well that's fine and then you can take again look at the responses to find out just quickly kind of a needs assessment um, what would they like to see happen and I can do that from there so that is another way in which you can kind of rank things but really what you're doing is you're getting a summary of what the general class would like to see happen um, now I've shown you forms, but I haven't shown you a quiz yet. Now, one of the things I did, I did do this in a quiz. I'm going to show you in a second the results of that. Um, and I asked students, it was in my TESOL course, about trying to do a lesson planning and what should come first, what could come second. The problem with it is that um, there's actually two problems with it. Number one is that the ordering which I had had a few options to it where a couple of modules could be switched around. And the other one is that uh, if students put the first thing out of order at the top everything else was wrong below it uh, because what happens in the quiz is it right it says an absolute ranking this one needs to be number one this one needs to be number four so on and so forth so you move one of those things out but then everything else is the same all of it is wrong so I'll just show you an example of how this happened look at how many of these were wrong all of the red is how many were wrong but really it wasn't that bad what had happened is a couple of students near the top had switched a couple of things. Everything else was in the right order. But of course now everything is now out of sequence. And so um, that became a bit of a problem. So what ended up happening was I manually marked this instead. So the ranking tool didn't help me very much in that uh, because unless it's an absolute must be in this order, it just, it can throw things off. So in other words, let's just say the student put the, wrong thing for number one and maybe they put that near the bottom but two three four five six seven eight were all right they would all be wrong because two got shifted up to one three got shifted up to two so ideally i don't use this in um, automatic marking this doesn't give me very good statistics for myself um, so i still put these in here so students can move them around can use it but I manually mark them. Um, so I go through and just to give you a tip, I try and go with groups of things together. Um, so as long as the what is the majority of things that are in the correct order and I give them maybe half a mark for each of those and then that way I can get a better score of what's happening. So anyway, 
Um, that is the basics in regards to ranking tool and what you can use it for in the class. Um, there's probably a lot of other ideas out there, but those are things that I do quite a bit with my students. Most of them I do as anonymous, except for when I have things like um, the needs assessment where each student wants to rank. But even then, I probably put it anonymous because students can then feel free to say what they would like to put first. So there you are. Hopefully that helps you and give you some ideas of how to use the ranking tool in Microsoft Forms.